In the last video, I made a table saw jointer sled for safely ripping work pieces at an angle. In this first episode of a new series, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Super Gradient Generator app for Easel from Inventables. Welcome to episode 1 of this new series. I will return to episode 11 of the Luthiers Workshop build series again after this video and we can finish off making all the cool jigs Luthiers can use in the workshop. Today though I want to introduce you to an awesome project I'm really excited to share with all of you CNC users who are running your machines on the Easel platform from Inventables. For those who aren't familiar, Easel is a free browser-based CAD and CAM solution that was designed for use with the Inventables XCarve and Shapeoko CNC machines. It's a great way to simplify the often frustrating and intimidating learning curve of programs like Fusion 360 or Rhino 3D. The downside is it's pretty much limited to 2.5D carving, which is top-down only. Unless you're making slab-bodied guitars like Telecasters, it's not that useful for luthiers, until now. I teamed up with Ethan Kinney, who is a senior CAD systems engineer at PBC Linear in the USA, and he was kind enough to agree to code an app idea I had that would greatly improve the functionality of Easel with luthiers in mind. If you're not a luthier though, you'll still get a lot of mileage out of this app. It's called the Super Gradient Generator, and at this time we're awaiting for it to complete Inventable's approval process, so you can't carve with it yet. But once approved, it will magically appear in the Apps tab of your easel. I will do a full run through of my design and manufacturing workflow for CNC at a later stage, and add it to this playlist. For now though, let me take you step by step through my recipes for achieving a number of different carves you might like to use on your CNC machine. Gradient 1. Headstock Face Transitions Fender style guitars employ a scooped transition in the headstock face to drop the tuners below the string height at the nut and to allow for access to the truss rod. You can see my manual method for bashing these out in episode 6 of my Luthiers Workshop build series. Here's how I do it. I've got a neck open in an easel session. I have my outline selected with a 1 8 inch bit set to cut outside the line at a depth of 20 millimeters. You'll see I've also imported a separate outline of the headstock shape only. This is what we're going to lay our gradient into. I have the cut depth set to 10 millimeters, but it doesn't really matter. With the headstock outline selected, I open my apps library and find the super gradient generator. Mine lives in my private tab because I'm running a pre-release copy on my system. The gradient type is an ease out. As you can see, there are a few options for you to play with. The start depth is zero. The end depth is 10 millimeters. By clicking the show all option, I can see what's happening in relation to my outline. I want to do less sanding, so I move the step slider to 100. We can see in the preview that we're not getting what we want yet, so I change the direction to down, then set the shape type to rectangular. Now we've got the right kind of gradient. I'd like to change the length of the transition, which I can do by moving the gradient length slider. I just made my gradient shorter. Once I import the gradient and generate a detailed preview, you can see the result. Those little splinters around the edge can be avoided if the headstock outline you import for this operation is slightly bigger than you need it. Although, in the real world, you'd lose those splinters to sanding anyway. So there it is. Gradient 2. Belly Carve Belly carves make an instrument more comfortable to play and they can be pretty hard to get right manually. Here's how to program a robot to do it for you. For this demonstration, I've imported a closed curve of my body outline 
and another closed curve that represents the outline of my belly carve. By selecting the carve outline, it's possible to change the size and shape of the circle if you wish. The app is open and my first move is to click show all so I can see what's happening. This setting here would cut a half sphere, but I want to adjust this. My body thickness is 45, so I make the depth half of that. As usual, I crank up the steps to 100, then I play with the gradient length to flatten out the bottom a bit, to bring the bottom of the carve closer to the edge of the instrument. This looks about right to me. Don't forget, you can ease this curve in if you like also. I prefer to sand it myself, so I'll leave this as is. I hit import, then generate a detailed preview. What we have is a perfect belly carve, but as you can see, we've also carved a lot more than we'd actually like. This is okay, all part of the plan. The next step is to delete the original circle curve, then select the belly carve and the outline. We go back into our apps and open Intersect All, and after checking the preview, we can import. Once again, we generate a detailed preview, and this is the result. A thing I like to do is reselect the outline and move it to the front of the design so the outline carve isn't obstructed. Gradient 3 Arm Carve. This is the simplest form of arm carve. I'll show you the more complicated version in a minute. Here's the recipe. As well as all the usual guitar things, I've imported two extra curves. One is the start of my arm carve, the other a slightly offset outer constraint. I select my starting curve and open the app. The first thing to do is activate the show all function. The curve is facing the wrong way. I change the depth while it's nearby, increase the steps, then reverse the height. This fixes the direction. Then I change the shape height so the gradient sits just outside my outer constraint. That's looking good, so I hit import, then generate detailed preview. Now I have to clean up my constraints. I delete the starting curve and regenerate. Then I select the gradient and the outer constraint and deselect the body outline, which I don't want to change right now. I open Intersect All and ensure Remove Original is selected, then Import. Lastly, I delete the outer constraint, bring the outline to the front and regenerate. That's a very clean arm carve. Gradient 4. Offset arm carve. This is the same idea as the previous operation except this time, the carve follows the outline of the guitar as opposed to just being a straight line. I've imported two extra closed curves again, just like before. I select both constraint curves, then open the app.
I input my start depth, which is backwards from the previous operations I've shown you. Then make my end depth zero. I show all, so I can see what's going on, and that shows me my gradient is radiating out the correct way. Remember, you can ease in if you want. I set my steps, and remove original shapes. All of the other fields are good. I import, and generate detailed preview. The gradient is good, but now we have to remove our artifacts. I delete the starting curve, and I left the other one in there to save time. One last generate function, and that's an offset arm carve. Gradient 5, Heel Joint. This is basically another offset function that adds functionality and ergonomics to your builds. In my easel session, I have my outline and once again, two constraint curves for the gradients. As before, I select my two constraints and open the app. Show all to see what I'm working with, then set my start depth to 10 and my end to zero. I maximize my steps again, then fix path and remove original shapes. Import, delete constraints, and then generate. This is a pretty subtle heel style but you can experiment and create others also. Gradient 6, Carve Top. In order to pull this off, You'll have to experiment in your CAD program of choice to work out the best offsets for your design. As with the previous examples, I've imported two curves to constrain the gradient. The starting curve starts on the face of the instrument, and the outer curve terminates on the sides. As before, I select both, and open the app. Step 1, show wall, ease in, set the start to half of the body depth, and the end to zero. Crank the steps, remove the original shapes, and import. Next we delete the inner constraint, you would also delete the outer constraint and have your outline ready to go on another workpiece. This example could have more of an ease in on the top, so that's another thing you can season to taste. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this episode. In the next video, we'll return to our regular programming where I'm making a bunch of smaller jigs and fixtures to finish up the table saw series. I hope to see you then.